You must understand that on the part of spirituality, mm, on the part of spirituality, and to truly be able to understand divinity or to understand God, you must be ready to stand alone. It is only a man that is ready to stand alone that can actually become creative. You cannot become creative when your fragmented part is lost into so many memories of emotions and sensations that you are getting every day. So what people confuse as a loneliness, which is lonely, lonely be, people confuse feeling lonely as to being alone. But it's not. It's not the same thing. Just as people confuse being awake as to being what? Conscious person. It's not the same thing. And because it is not the same thing, it is important that you understand what does aloneness mean. If you want to be able to worship God, if you want to be able to understand the divinity of the universe, you must be ready to walk alone. People are afraid of walking alone because why? Their mind have been naturally institutionalized. And because they have been naturally institutionalized, it is difficult for them to walk alone. It is difficult for them to stand alone. But you must understand that your truth, only you can discover your truth. No one else can discover your truth for you. That's a fact. When you have a near death, when people say, I have a near death experience, you have near death experience not with people. Individually, you need to have a near death experience. If you want to encounter that which is mystical and that which is spiritual, you can't encounter that which is mystical and that which is spiritual in groups of people. In the, even when your body is in the group of people, internally it is still individual. So aloneness, aloneness is actually the way of the spiritualist. Aloneness is actually the way of a man or a woman that is ready to wake up and is ready to connect with the divine energies and the divinities that moves around them. Aloneness is not loneliness. A lot of people think that because I don't have people around me, that means I am lonely. What you are lonely for is for memory. And because people confuse this together, they feel like, oh, when, let me explain one. Let me let you understand one thing. And I hope you guys are understanding me. When there's too much memory in the body and when there's too much fragmented, broken pieces of ourselves, we become lonely. That's a fact. When there is too much broken pieces, when there's too much fragments of the body, too much fragment of memories that are scattered left, right, center, Definitely, that individual becomes what? Lonely. That individual becomes what? Depressed. Have you asked yourself a question? How do you really perceive the world? How? When, if you look at a person that is sleeping, what is that person doing? He's sleeping. But he's perceiving the whole universe. How, how big do you see the world? You cannot see the world, how, whichever way you see the world on how big you see the world is based on what is inside of you. I'm trying to recollect my thoughts. The energy is floating left, right, center. However big, you know, you see the world is based on what, what is inside of you. Have you ever asked yourself a question like you put your, yourself in front of a mirror and see, just try to look at yourself outside of yourself. I don't know. I don't know if any of you have ever had this experience of not like you are seeing your, your body, not like when you have a, an NDE near death experience, not that, but like you are, you are walking around, but you are seeing yourself outside of yourself. Have you ever experienced that? Whereby you are walking, you are talking to people, you are doing everything, but you are seeing your body doing it, but you are not there. But you are just, you are just behind or somewhere observing your body doing all that the body is doing. This happens to me a lot. And when this happens to me a lot, sometimes I become a bit, you know, disoriented or it's called disassociated. But it is a fact because when you truly look at it, all the memories is stored in this body. Do you know how many geographical map that you have inside of you? A lot. 
Do you know how many faces that you have stored inside of you? A lot. Do you know how many voices that you have stored inside of you? Billions. Right from the point where you were born to the point you are like, like this. Billions of voices you have that is stored inside of you. Billions of, you know, of, uh, uh, um, how do you call it in English? Billions of voices you have stored inside of you. Billions of, um, of faces you have stored inside of you. And in all of this, you are able to see it. When you close your eyes, the, you are able to see that the world is very big inside of yourself. But if you look at your body in the mirror, your body is very tiny body. Either your body is big or not big, but your body is very tiny. But inside of you, you are seeing the world as what? Very big. What is it that is perceiving the world as very big and very vast? What is it that measures? What is it that measures distance? From where is distance measured? A lot of folks say, but distance is measured in the brain. Distance is measured in the mind. Measurement is done in the, in the heart, whatever, whatever, whatever. But what, what actually truly is that? Uh, look at my body. If you really, let us look at, look at my body. And as you're looking at my body, I also want you to look at your body. When you look at your body and you look at my body, ask yourself a, a question. How is it that you know what you know? How? Who is the person that knows what you know? Who is that individual that is knowing what you know and every time a certain thought switch in a certain direction, boom, 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 all the information that you need just automatically present itself to you? How is that possible? When you are given a task that you don't know for the first time and someone showed you that task, instantly you start understanding how to do that task. Who is the person that is really doing the task? Is it the body? Is the body the doer of the action, of the activity, or there is someone that is the doer of the activity? And this is why I'm asking you, this is why I'm saying to you, to be able to grow, you must be ready to stand alone. Being afraid of standing alone means that you are afraid of growth. Because you cannot be creative. You can never become creative if you don't stand alone. Why? Because when you are standing, standing alone means that when you are standing alone, you are thinking alone. Are you not doing that? To be creative, you need to think alone, isn't it? Meaning that in, in, the, in the depth of your consciousness, everything is happening. But it is not happening with other people around you, but it's happening individually. So the love of God, the fear of God, the love of nature, the fear of nature, the love of humans, the fear of humans is an individualistic thing. And because an individualistic thing, that is creating memories, fragments. But the problem with us is that we get very attached to the fragment. And I say to you, and I say to you again, my brothers, my sisters, that is listening to the sound of my voice, if you truly, truly, truly want to understand the essence of the universe, then you must be ready to stand alone. Without standing alone, you can never, 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 never understand the essence of the universe. No one has ever understood the essence of the universe if they did not stand alone. To stand alone means what? You must be able to dive deep into the quietness of your heart. You must be able to dive deep into the quietness of your consciousness. You must be ready to dive deep into the, into the darkness of your mind. That is a fact. Whatever it is I'm teaching you right now, or whatever it is that you've been teaching me, or sorry, whatever it is that I've been teaching you, and same also what you have been teaching me, to understand it, it is not in the group of people that I understand it. It is in the aloneness of my consciousness that I understand it. And it is in the aloneness of your consciousness that you understood and understand every single word that I'm saying right now. It's a fact. Without the aloneness of your consciousness, you cannot understand. Without the aloneness of, your, of, of you going within yourself and trying to cross the depth of your own heart, trying to cross the depth of the darkness of your mind, you cannot understand. So aloneness is required. 
solitude. Solitude is not locking yourself away from people. Solitude is not want, not wanting to talk to people. That is not solitude. Solitude is when you are even in conversation with people, you are also in conversation with that divinity that is within you. The question now to you right now is, how many of you is in conversation with the divinity that is within you? How many of you have been able to tap into the, dip, into the depth of your consciousness? How many of you have been able to really look and take a peek at the depth of your consciousness? Just look at your body. Just look at your body and ask yourself, how did you come to have all the knowledge that you have right now? How did you come to possess all the knowledge that you have? And the knowledge and the, everything that you possess is uniquely yours. Because the moment the body stops functioning, that which produces or filters that information automatically also is not there. So what is that? Creativity comes when you are alone. When you are ready to stand alone, then you become creative. The mind does not become creative when it is too bogged with too many memories. Do you understand? The mind does not become, does not become creative. The mind becomes lethargic. Lethargic and you know, not ready to do anything when it is too attached to the fragments of memories and circumstances that is happening around it. But when you're ready to go within yourself and cross through and just allow yourself to be sailed through the canoe, you know, using the canoe of your thought to sail through the vast ocean, the vast ocean of your mind, then you can start coming to understand yourself. And start appreciating that aloneness that is within. Aloneness is not what is outside. Loneliness, being lonely, feeling lonely, is not because you are alone. Oh, I'm feeling so lonely. Oh, nobody understands me. Oh, everybody is bad. No, 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 no. That is not what I'm talking about here. Oh, I'm depressed. Oh, no. That, that, that loneliness is as a result of you desiring something. Being alone is not because of anything. It's as a result of what? You desiring something, which is also nothing but another, fun, another point of, another, another aspect of fragments of memories. Another point of what? Another functions of what? Fragments of memories. Now, the question I want you to ask yourself right now is, what fragment of memories and emotion are you using to torture yourself from and using to block yourself from you know really going within yourself can you tell me can you tell me what function what part of the fragment of memories you are using to block yourself from really going within yourself hmm? a lot of us we do that all the time but then to be able to realize that which is divine to be able to realize anything that is divine, you must be ready to stand alone. You must not be afraid of standing alone. You must understand that advancement in any actions or in any activity that you put your hand upon depends on your personal endeavor. It is not on the endeavor of other people. Your personal endeavor means what? You ready to stand alone. You can never make any progress in anything if you don't put your own personal endeavor. Not what is called a group endeavor. Even if it is a group, your personal endeavor is also contributing to that group. Is it not so? Thank you very much, beautiful, beauty bed. Is it not so? So to be good in whatever you're doing, whether it is material, to be, to be contented in whatever you're doing, whether it is spiritual, a personal endeavor is required. Now, the question I want to ask you again right now before I continue my conversation is, what are the personal endeavors that you are putting 24 hours into yourself? Personal endeavor is not how people see you. No. No. It's not how people see you. It's not to achieve what, you know, it's about what are the inner reflection, the inner dialogues. What are the inner reflections? What are the inner dialogues? 
when you truly start becoming self-aware, then you understand that to really go and understand that in the, that concept of the divine, the divine or whatever it is, you need to stand alone. And how are you standing alone right now? So that is the end of this conversation. <laughs> it's a short class. So that is the end. I'm open for questions now. Thank you very much. Bye.